The Miner is a very unique and intricate card added to Clash Royale more than 7 years ago and since then has been a very prominent card. It's a 3 elixir card that does very little damage compared to other 3 elixir cards, walks slow, and doesn't attack very fast. But like many legendary cards in this game, has its unique perk. This is the only troop that can be placed anywhere in the arena. A perk previously only held by spells. Likewise, this would make it the only troop to have a reduced crown tower damage that. The attributes of a spell applied to a troop was undoubtedly an interesting concept. The ability to play it anywhere gave it so much potential, and players certainly have been utilizing this potential for the entirety of its lifetime in many unique ways. So let's go over the history of this card, see how it's impacted several metas, and talk about why this card has not been changed much over the years despite its consistent ability to thrive in any environment. But first, we need to talk about today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a free-to-play RPG that can be enjoyed casually, yet still offers a highly competitive skill ceiling. There are many reasons you need to be playing this game. First of all, the game currently has over 700 champions and has a dedicated developer team adding new ones every single month. There are billions of ways to customize these champions using masteries and artifacts to give your champions new abilities and bonuses. And if that's not enough to get you to download the game, you can even join clans to experience your journey with other people which will also give you access to clan quests, the clan shop, and even clan tournaments. I really like the clan boss feature that clans give you access to. You keep attacking it until your entire team gets taken out and you get rewarded based on how much damage you can deal to it. Still not convinced? Well, to celebrate the limited series Raid Call of the Arbiter, Raid's adding some of the new characters from the series as champions you can play with in-game. All you have to do is just log into Raid for just 7 days between now and July 24th and you will get the champion Artuk, a mighty orc warlord, for free. With all of this and more coming to Raid, there's no reason to not get into this game now. If you're new, you can get a free starter pack. Just scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description and play now. The Miner was officially released on May 3rd, 2016. Although it wasn't crazy popular, it was immediately seeing a decent amount of play amounting to a 13% use rate in top ladder in just the first couple of days after its release. This number is not a good representation of the card's true strength at the time, since people were still trying to level it up and legendaries were extremely difficult to upgrade during this period. The Miner was a great answer that filled a specific, unique role that would hopefully provide another counterplay option to the most powerful cards in the meta. Princess and Elixir Pump were some of the strongest cards at this time. What these cards had in common was being able to safely sit out of the range of troops, earning more value the more time they spent on the field. Spells could be used as options to help take them out since they could be placed anywhere in the arena, but they always did a fixed amount of damage, then disappeared. Miner though had to be killed, and although the damage wasn't guaranteed, it could do a lot more if it wasn't answered. Since the Miner was the only melee troop that could instantly damage a tower on its deployment, it was given a stat previously only held by spells, doing reduced damage to crown towers, 40% of its damage to be exact, likely because that was the standard already for all spells. Miner really was an interesting concept being a troop that fits the role of a spell, but it also could act as a surprise tank for smaller units like minions or goblins to allow them to deal great damage. So you were seeing a lot of minion horde and goblins paired with the Miner. It seemed like a fairly balanced card upon release, and players were having fun with it, which is why only two weeks later it would surprise many players when the Miner would appear in the balance changes getting a 6% health buff. This was a small buff obviously, but it really didn't seem necessary. The card was already being used, and obviously being brand new, it would need some time to truly settle and find its place. The following was Supercell's reasoning. The Miner is a really fun card, and people are still figuring out the best uses for him. He's in pretty good shape overall, but a few more hit points should help him find his place in the arena. I don't really understand this reasoning. They admitted the Miner is already good, and it wasn't like the use rates were particularly low. And even if they were, they should have considered that it was a legendary in 2016. People aren't going to be able to level it up fast. The card was only two weeks old, so why wouldn't you just give people more time to figure things out? Remember at this point, challenges and tournament standard weren't even a thing. Lots of people considered this buff to be unnecessary, even at the time. By the next month, the card was in over a quarter of top ladder decks, proving itself to be very useful. It was appearing a lot with three musketeers and a lot of cheap swarm cards. One great combo of split lane pressuring was having two musketeers on one side and one miner on the other side, then having the miner tank for the solo musketeer. The three musketeer miner combo was pretty prevalent throughout 2016, and the miner was undoubtedly a very good card, which is why it would be very surprising to the players when the miner would get another buff in the following set of balance changes. On July 4th, 2016, the miner would get a deploy time buff, going from the standard 1 second to 0.75 seconds. This allowed it to start moving 
moving and hitting a full quarter second earlier, giving less reaction time to the opponent. As a result, the use rate rose to being in nearly one third of decks now. Furnace was rising in popularity and was the most popular spawner, making an appearance in the number one minor deck. You were also seeing a lot of Lava Hound with the Miner as well. Poison is the primary spell you would see with Miner. It was a great area of denial spell preventing swarms from countering the card so easily. Miner was such a versatile card that could fit into so many different decks. Wait a minute, why did Supercell buff this card not just once, but twice when it was already a decent card? What was their explanation for decreasing the deployment time of all things when it was already in more than a quarter of all decks in top ladder? Well, it was not acknowledged in the patch notes at all, and Supercell said that this was an unintended change. Supercell was likely testing this as a potential change in a developer build, but forgot to take it out. An update did also come out on the same day, so that seems to be the only likely explanation. Players were happy to hear that it would be reverted, but many players were saying that it wasn't enough. Enough. The miner was clearly very strong even before this deploy time decrease, and with it now being in the game for two months, players were starting to level it up more and face it much more often. By August, the miner was being used in more than half of top ladder decks. Princess and Elixir Pump were also being used in more than half of all top ladder decks at the same time. And with the miner being overall versatile and objectively too strong, its high usage rate made sense. Despite Supercell acknowledging the miner was in a state it wasn't supposed to be in, and even with maintenance breaks giving opportunities to change it back, Supercell would not change it back until the next set of balance changes seven weeks later. This balance change would also revert the 6% health buff it was given in May meaning the miner was back in his vanilla state. He had received two buffs since his release, and both were reverted in just one change. His use rate fell back to being in only a quarter of top ladder decks, but that's still significantly better than the previous time that he was in this state, and still far above the average use rate overall. It slowly rose to being used in about a third of all decks again by September though. The miner would get no more changes for the rest of 2016, but other balance changes would cause its position in the meta to shift. Poison was a big one. It was not only popular with the miner, but also also in Giant and Hog Rider decks. In fact, the top 5 most popular decks all had poison, so its ability to slow down troops was completely removed, making the card essentially worthless. The Elixir Pump also got a massive nerf, making it worthless as well. Although the Miner was okay at taking out Elixir Pumps, it was never really the best option, so this nerf didn't hurt the card as much. Princess had gotten a nerf at the same time as the Miner buff, so that card wasn't as relevant anymore either. By November, the Miner was being used in about a quarter of all decks again. Although using it to take care of Princesses and Elixir Pumps wasn't as necessary anymore, it kept finding a new purpose. During this period, the Lava Hound archetype was thriving, so that's the most popular deck you would see Miner in. The Mega Minion was extremely strong and thrived in Lava Hound, which certainly helped the Miner have a purpose. Purpose. Having the Lava Hound tank for the Miner and then having the Miner tank for the Lava Pups made the two cards a great synergy. But you even saw some Zap 8 decks and even a Miner Rocket Control deck being used by some top players for a while. However, as the year went on, the meta shifted to more Giant, Graveyard, and Elite Barbarians, and Miner wasn't really fitting into any of these archetypes, at least not in top ladder. Although it had had a steadily high use rate for a while, the meta just wasn't the right fit for the Miner by the end of 2016, and thus his presence in top ladder fell to only 3% in January. However, the Candlehead was certainly not done yet. Although the Miner's presence was now minimal on top ladder, he was certainly not considered a dead card by any stretch of the imagination. People typically ask why I hyper-focus specifically on top ladder stats in these videos, and the reason is because Grand and Classic Challenges didn't even exist until September 2016, and top ladder is usually a better representation of each card's power than all of ladder, because people are going to usually have lower leveled epics and legendaries in any place but top ladder, and obviously the more skilled players make it to the top, making every single card being played near their full potential in an even playing field. Miner being a legendary certainly is a reason for a lower use rate in top ladder, especially in 2017 because there were no magic items or trade tokens to help level cards up. Even people who spent a decent amount of money on the game didn't have all their legendaries maxed. I always go for top ladder stats because there simply are no grand challenge stats to look at from 2016, 2017, and most of 2018. I wanted to say this because although ladder stats suggest the miner was sort of useless around this time, miner control and spellbait decks were winning grand challenges constantly. Poison did get a buff in November, so you did see some minor poison in challenges, but it still had a 0% use rate in top ladder in January. Towards the end of the season though, this giant triple minion deck actually became the number one popular deck in top ladder, and giant miner was becoming a much more common duo. In February 2017, poison got another decent buff, making it used much more regularly. And even though both miner and giant had worked so well in the past with it, the main deck variation still contains the fireball instead. Minor poison was still overall used much more often than minor fireball after the last poison buff though. 
March is when things really started to get interesting. The Battle Ram had been recently released, which began making Three Musketeers rise in popularity again, thus creating a perfect opportunity for the Miner to thrive with the purple-haired trio. And there were even some popular Battle Ram decks that contained the Miner and not the Three Musketeers. This caused the Miner's top ladder use rate to hover around 20-25%. This was a great time for Miner players. Miner worked in several archetypes, including its very own control archetype. Miner 2.9 and 3.0 were the most popular Miner control variations, utilizing the power of the overpowered Electro Wizard. Although there were still plenty of giant Miner decks going around, Three Musketeers were only rising in popularity over the coming months, and thus Miner rose with it, even appearing in the number one deck in the whole game in June 2017. Although by the very next month, Knight was beginning to replace Miner in Three Musketeers almost entirely, with the trio beginning to phase out a little thanks to the rise of bridge spam. Three Musketeers were still being used a lot in challenges, especially with the new heal spell, but from what I saw, most of the Musketeer heal decks did not contain Miner. This is also around the time Miner Balloons started becoming very popular. So you saw the Miner in Three Musketeers, Giant, Balloon, Pekka, Lava Hound, and its own control archetype. You were even beginning to see a rise in Miner and Mortar. Bats had received a buff to contain five bats and were a great synergy to the Miner and would often be seen in Miner Mortar decks. Cheap Swarms were always the Miner's best synergy, so this combo working well together was far from a surprise. Mega Knight also came out around the time of the Bats buff, and Bats were a common synergy between the Miner and the Mega Knight, bringing the two together. Miner and Bats themselves were a near inseparable combo during the Bats height, and they certainly helped each other a lot. Miner Poison was already popular, but in 2017, the combo went from prominent to iconic. Lots of skilled players knew how to play the Miner and Poison in perfect positions to maximize the value of both cards. December would be a crazy month for the Miner due to some big changes in the meta. The Skeleton Barrel got a buff, now dealing death damage, and the Royal Ghost also came out, which was an extremely strong card upon its release. This deck became by far the number one most most popular deck of the season. Now that the Skeleton Barrel was viable, it was able to work well with the Miner because the Miner always worked well with Swarm cards. The whole deck was pretty Zap 8 oriented. Players absolutely hated this deck. An overpowered card combined with Mega Knight in its strongest state ever with a spawner and spellbait. Not exactly the recipe for a fun season. The Miner was hardly the focus of attention during this time, but that doesn't mean his part in the meta was any less important, especially considering he was the second most popular troop in top ladder, except for the Royal Ghost of course. But even with the Royal Ghost inevitably getting nerfed, it just got replaced with goblins and the Mega Knight Zap Bait deck had an even higher use rate than the previous season. Miner was even more popular going into 2018, peaking near a 39% use rate, officially becoming the most used troop other than the Ice Spirit. <laughs> Although I'm emphasizing the Miner's place in Mega Knight Bay, remember the Miner was still constantly being used in so many different archetypes. With new cards in 2017 being added to help the Miner thrive and it having above a 20% use rate consistently for almost an entire year, only creeping up more with time, it may seem like from a retrospective look that it was about time for a Miner nerf. It worked well in so many different decks, and the environment surrounding the Miner was much more beneficial to the card than it was upon release. But remember, as we go into 2018, the Miner was still in its vanilla state from May 2016, back when it was first released. So why was Supercell letting this card go so unchecked for so long? There are many factors that go into what cards Supercell decide to balance. Use and win rates are definitely a big factor, but another major factor is the community. I like to separate the community into two different groups, casual players and competitive players. The reason I separate them is because depending on what group you're in, your game experience, more specifically the cards you were going up against, was often much different than the other group. And if you in any way pay attention to Clash Royale discourse, you know people complain about this game a lot. It's always been this way, and will always be this way. Since the experiences are often different between the two groups, the two groups will usually complain about different cards, and Supercell does listen to both groups to an extent to determine which cards to balance. Elite Barbarians were nerfed because they were thriving in the casual environment, despite them having subpar rates in the competitive environment. Whereas the Bats, which weren't that big of a deal in the mid-ladder environment, were all over top ladder and challenges during their peak, and thus a nerf came very swiftly for that card as well. So where am I going with this? Well, high use rates in either environment usually almost always correspond with a large group of people complaining about that card, but the Miner was very unique in the instance where it really didn't get a lot of complaints by casual or pro players despite how often it was used, and that's because it felt fair to go against. Even if it was too strong, that's not the feeling you would get from going against Miner. It really didn't do that much damage and had decent counters. It couldn't be overleveled like cards of a lesser rarity either. Plus, no other card really fit in its niche, meaning it didn't really have any competition. It was still the only troop you could play anywhere in the arena. 
Although you may consider Goblin Barrel to be sort of similar, that card was instant countered by a log, of which was the most popular spell by far during most of this period. Miner got the most spotlight in the competitive scene, but pro players were not really bothered by this card. It was a really fun card to play, and was considered to take a significant amount of skill to master, which obviously is going to be favorable for pro players. Most cards that fit in this role of high rates and no complaints are usually either spells or one elixir cards, so this was certainly a unique situation. But then again, the Miner is very similar to a spell. If there was a large sum of people complaining about this card, it probably would have gotten a nerve. But most players were just contempt with the minor the way it was. I looked through a lot of posts from 2017 and 2018, but I couldn't find even one genuine hater of the minor. In February 2018, there would be some balance changes that would drastically hurt the miner's place in the meta. The Mega Knight, Skeleton Barrel, and Inferno Dragon would all get nerfed. Mega Knight and Skeleton Barrel were nerfed to oblivion, so Mega Knight Zap Bait was dead for now. The Dark Prince was also given a buff in the same balance change, which brought both of the princes back into the meta. Of course, minor itself wasn't bad by any stretch. In fact, the number one deck in Top Ladder was Giant Double Prince with Miner for a bit. It was still appearing in several different archetypes, it would be pointless to go over them again. There really isn't much else to say about the Miner for 2018. It got no balance changes the entire year. To sum up really what you need to know, both Princes eventually got nerfed and Three Musketeers popularity rose a lot. Although Miner could work well with Three Musketeers, the Three Musketeer decks that were the most popular by the end of 2018 did not contain Miner. The last deck I wanted to show off from this year was a 1.9 Elixir Miner Cycle deck. A lot of pro players were playing this deck around September, and it was not an easy deck to play. The sheer fact that the Miner could be the most expensive card in a competitively viable deck was just astonishing. Since the cards were cheaper, it required many more placements than your typical deck, and it was crazy how much value you could squeeze out of such cheap, fragile cards. Throughout 2018, the Miner's use rate was typically hovering around 15 and 25% depending on the month, and it was much closer to a 15% use rate by the end of the year. Going into 2019, Three Musketeers would get nerfed to Oblivion, which by itself diversified the meta a lot. But of course, Miner Poison Control decks were very dominant before and after this nerf. The use rate of Miner did seem to rise quite a bit after the Triple Musketeer nerf. In July 2019, a huge set of balance changes would come to Clash Royale, and the Miner would appear for the first time in almost three years. So what was Supercell going to do with this card that had been in nearly, if not over, 20% of decks practically since its release? It would get a range nerf from 1.3 tiles to 1.2 tiles, and that's only because melee cards ranges were all being simplified, so it was becoming melee medium. According to Supercell themselves, the range was actually above from 1 tile to 1.2 tiles, but every other source I found said 1.3 to 1.2 tiles, so I'm not sure what that was all about. If you try to find the range stat of the old miner, it just says melee. It's such a minimal difference that you can't even really tell by watching gameplay. Someone probably can, but not me. Regardless of whether it was a slight nerf or a slight buff, it really made no difference. The miner was usually always placed directly on his target anyway, so range really made even less of a difference in his case than it would for other cards. Cards. It basically has the same effect as nerfing the damage of the Ice Golem. This balance change honestly might have not even been worth talking about, but I just thought it was interesting because this meant the Miner was no longer officially in his vanilla state. The fact that the Miner could last even this long in his vanilla state was astonishing, since most cards don't last more than a few weeks in their vanilla state. I'm definitely overemphasizing this change. It really made no difference at all. I don't even think players would have noticed this change if it wasn't in the patch notes. The next time we would see a pretty big development for the Miner was in October 2019. October 2019 historically is one of the, if not the most chaotic, unbalanced meta in Clash Royale history, simply because there were so many game-breakingly overpowered cards during this season. But it turned out to be a meta that the Miner worked great in. The biggest reason was a card that I have yet to mention, the Wall Breakers. In October 2019, they would be given an elixir reduction, and the stat nerf that came with it simply wasn't enough, making them overpowered. This card had been out for 8 months at the time of this buff, but it had been useless for the entirety of its lifespan despite numerous previous buffs, so I think Supercell was just eager to get this card a spot in the meta. As a result of this change, wall breakers were in around a quarter of all Grand Challenge decks this season, and the Miner synergized very well with this card causing its usage rate to peak at 35%. But this wasn't the only major factor we need to consider. The Witch would also be given a huge rework making it game breaking, ultimately causing it to appear in nearly half of all decks, one of the highest usage rates a card has ever had in Grand Challenge history in fact. 
So why am I bringing the witch into this? Well, because the witch was so obviously controlling this month, poison exploded in popularity in order to better counter this card. And what card does poison historically always work best with? That's right. Minor poison was one of the main thriving combos this season as a response to the witch meta. Some earlier versions even incorporated the witch. One thing you will notice with this season is every single minor deck contained poison and or bomb tower. If you weren't playing witch, you needed a good deck to counter it. The next season in November, the witch and the wall breakers would both get heavy nerfs, returning the meta back to a somewhat normal state. However, minor and wall breakers were still performing very well and would continue to. For the next few months, you would also see a lot of elixir golem and night witch, so almost anytime you saw minor, you would still see a bomb tower with it to help counter this. The magic archer was also very popular during this time, so you would often see him with the minor as well. Mega Knight Zapbait was even making a comeback, with some even replacing the skeleton barrel with the wall breakers. Despite the minor's strength seemingly being a result of environment, since before the October 2019 season he was hovering around the 25% use rate, the miner's use rate only continued to grow after nerfing many of the proactive cards in the meta since then. By mid-January, the miner was already the number one most used card in Grand Challenges, nearing 40%, and this continued into February. Now you were really starting to see people call for a miner nerf directly. Yet this was still a very unpopular opinion at the time, as anyone who brought up the idea of potentially giving the miner even a small nerf was met with backlash and ridicule. People said that the problem was just other cards, or that the complainer simply lacked skill, or that the miner wasn't very strong, but just versatile. The last argument never made sense to me. A card's versatility is part of its strength. Just because the miner lacked proper competition didn't mean it needed to be in a position where it could have 40% use rates. People were just obsessed with the idea of leaving miner exactly the way it was, despite how objectively strong it was. Supercell themselves said a card should have around an 8-12% to use rate, and miner's use rate was around quadruple that consistently. I could acknowledge that it's overall healthier for the game for certain cards to have higher usage rate than others, but when any card is used past even 30%, I think at least a small nerf is more than justifiable, no matter how healthy that card may be. It didn't matter what the environment was, the miner would continually adapt and be used in several different archetypes. There has never been a period in its entire three-year lifespan where it was considered a bad card. Despite the overwhelming community consensus that the card should be left alone, Seth, who was the head of balancing, would tweet out in February 2020, nerf coming to a popular card, forgive me in your hearts now knowing that there would be backlash when the official announcement would be made. The official Clash Royale Twitter account would reply to this tweet saying, you should be saying sorry to B-Rad. If you don't know who B-Rad is, he was pretty much the best known minor player in the Clash Royale community who was very good at playing the card and contributed greatly to advancing the minor meta. He was known for pioneering one of the most iconic minor decks ever, Minor 3.0, which was the Ewis deck I showed you earlier. Players obviously knew what was coming and many were not happy about it. It wasn't clear on what approach Supercell was going to take on the card. Some suggested not being able to play the card on your own side, and others suggested a simple crown tower reduction nerf, but only time would tell to see how Supercell would handle this universally loved card. Players were eagerly waiting to see how Supercell would touch their favorite card. This nerf would be coming in March 2020. All the nerf simply was was reducing its crown tower damage from 40% to 35%. This nerf is very small, and what's actually crazy is that the spells had actually already gotten this exact nerf already in a previous set of balance changes in December 2017, over two years by this point. Cycling spells onto towers was considered way too strong back in 2017, which is what caused the standard reduction but the miner evaded it back then, making it inconsistent with every spell since then. Even the lightning, which was considered an awful card at the time of that nerf, was forced into it for consistency. Now I know the miner isn't a spell, but it seems fairly obvious the 40% crown tower damage stat was simply there because it was already the standard for all spells. It may have taken a few years, but it was consistent once again. Players were quite upset at this nerf, as you would expect. But how did this nerf affect the miner? It was completely useless. I'm just kidding, it had a bit of a drop off, but still had very good rates, and it didn't take long for the miner's use rate to creep back up close to 30% and become the most used troop in the game once again. The fact that Supercell nerfed it and it was still the number one troop card really makes me frustrated at people who defend blatantly overpowered cards. People always act like even the smallest nerf is going to completely destroy the card they like. Five months after this minor nerf, the spells would all be getting another crown tower damage reduction going from 35% to 30%. However, unlike the first time it was reduced, the miner would now be included, also getting its crown tower damage reduced reduced to 30%. Again, many players were very upset about this, acting as this was a death sentence for the card. When a card is the number one troop in the game, a small
small nerf is not going to kill it. Supercell was obviously intentionally lightly nerfing it anyway because of how beloved it was. After this nerf, the card dropped off to an all-time low of 11%, which, mind you, is still about average for most cards. But over time, it slowly kept trickling back up, and by the end of 2020, was back up to a 25% use rate, making it the most used troop in the game yet again. However, you are mainly seeing the Miner indexed with Balloon or Mega Knight Zapate. Although still a very healthy and viable card, the Miner control decks that were acclaimed for being such fun high skill decks were no longer popular. Those decks depended on the Miner's damage for dealing damage to towers, whereas most other Miner decks used Miner as a secondary win condition in which the damage wasn't as important. Even though Miner control was a beloved archetype by many skilled players, I do still think nerfing Miner was the right thing to do, because a card should not serve as many purposes as the Miner once did. It was still the most used troop in the game after two nerfs, which definitely justifies the nerfs entirely in my opinion, but these two nerfs would probably cause the biggest butterfly effect that Clash Royale has seen since the wizard caused the birth of the three musketeers. Let me explain. So as I already said, players were not fans of either of the minor nerfs, and requests to nerf minor were very unpopular. You could find so many requests to nerf the Mega Knight, Electro Giant, Hog Rider, or pretty much any card if you looked hard enough, and yet Supercell rarely if ever gave attention to any of the cards most players did want to see nerfed. And I'm not saying this to criticize Supercell, it's obvious they were basing their balancing decisions based off of statistics, which is what they should do, because otherwise we get a broken executioner for three months. I'm just saying this because this is how a good chunk of the community was looking at things. These nerfs would cause B-Rad to sarcastically call for yet another minor nerf in a moment of frustration. Dude, minor needs a nerf. I mean, if he's viable in this whack deck, yeah, I would say he needs a nerf. I'm on minor nerf side, honestly. Which would ultimately lead to many others to do the same. In late 2021, if you were on TikTok, you were beginning to see short videos of usually an Electro Giant portrayed as a really strong card, and then the joke was at the end, people would mock Supercell saying that they should nerf minor because that's what it felt like Supercell was doing in 2020, ignoring calls for nerfs of popular nerf requests to nerf a card that almost nobody was asking for a nerf for, which obviously was the minor. This meme was all over TikTok. Some of these videos were getting millions of views, and it spread beyond the Clash Royale community. On January 22nd, 2022, one TikToker posted a now deleted video showing the phrase Nerf Minor commented on a video where a girl discussed her trauma, gaining over 1.5 million views in three weeks. Many players at this point were just sick of the meme, but the phrase was still often spammed in posts completely unrelated to the minor. In February 2022, someone actually wrote the words Nerf Minor in the snow right outside Supercell headquarters, and in March 2022, Supercell put out a video showcasing some fake footage of the minor having very low HP, dealing no damage, and even even healing the towers, which in my opinion was a very cool video for Supercell to make, embracing the meme. And yes, I didn't mention this, but because the miner did much less damage to crown towers than it used to, it was a long running joke that the miner practically healed the towers. In terms of the miner's spot in the meta for 2021 and 2022, the miner's use rate fell in early 2021 after the March balance changes from around 25-30% to 30 to around 12-15%. to 15 I should note that the Elite Barbarians had gotten a massive buff in this set of balance changes, which is interesting because the last time the miner had a big fall in popularity was during the period four years prior, soon after Elite Barbarians had gotten a different massive buff back then. For the first part of 2022, you would see the minor fluctuate between around a 12 and 18% use rate with no big developments. It saw no balance changes since the August 2020 nerf and no big spikes in usage. That briefly sums up everything you need to know right up until a very important meta shift in October 2022. On October 26th, 2022, the Phoenix and the Monk would enter the arena completely warping the meta overnight. Phoenix was used a lot, and although you didn't see a huge uptick in minor usage right away due to the main popular decks just being either Elixir Golem or Mirror, the Phoenix would get emergency nerfed to prevent these awful decks from being viable. The emergency nerf was fairly minor, and thus it still had a very high use rate, and minor just happened to fit really well in some Phoenix and Monk decks. By November, the minor was up to a 20% use rate for the first time in ages and it wasn't over yet. In December, the Mighty Miner would be given a movement speed buff, and Miner found a purpose working with him in some decks. The Mighty Miner was also given an emergency nerf though, but the environment was different enough from before October so that the Miner still stood strong. By the end of the year, Miner was the second most popular troop in Grand Challenges, only losing to the Phoenix. Going into 2023, the first set of balance changes would come in February, and Supercell's randomly selected OP card of the season this month would be the Archers. Archers worked well with Mortar, so you saw more Mortar decks, including Archers, which 
which also widely brought Minor back into Mortar. I didn't mention this, but the goblins were also buffed in October of the previous year also, which were helping these decks thrive. Some variations would include the Phoenix or the Mighty Miner as well. The Miner was working so well with recently buffed and newly included cards. Poison was also becoming much more popular again with the Miner and likely at least in part due to the major rocket nerf which also came in the February balance changes. With all these factors combined, it created the perfect environment for Miner to really thrive once again. By March, his use rate was about 30%, very high despite the nerfs he had received. At this point, it had been almost three years since his Crown Tower reduction nerfs. Throughout February and March, there was once again calls to nerf the Miner, and no, this wasn't just a meme, people were serious. So on April 4th, 2023, the Miner would receive the last change it has ever received to this day. Can you guess what it is? That's right, another Crown Tower reduction nerf of 5%, now down to 25%. Fun fact, a max level Miner today actually deals the same Crown Tower damage as a level 1 Miner in 2016. I should also note, as of modern day, the Crown Tower damage stat is no longer consistent among spells or the Miner, but even after this nerf, he still had a 20% use rate, climbing to the second most popular troop in Grand Challenges thanks to the Archers falling off. And that pretty much brings us to today, where his use rate still consistently covers around a healthy 17%. The Miner is one of the few cards that has never been bad at any point in its history. Its lowest usage rate I could ever find recorded was 11%, and that's still a number some cards have never made it to in a grand challenge ever. The decks you see it in today are really nothing new, except to this Goblin Hut Mirror deck, which apparently actually is being used by top players, at least for a brief period in May 2023. The last thing I didn't really mention was the release of the Goblin Drill in 2021. This card was the first and only building card that could be placed anywhere in the arena, which acted as another win condition. I wonder if this card was added as an attempt to act as a substitute for the old Miner to bring back decks that felt similar to how Miner control was back in the day of its peak, since the Crown Tower nerfs have essentially killed that style of playing Miner. The Miner is an iconic card in Clash Royale and is one of the most beloved cards in this game, and I think it will always remain as an above average card. Will Supercell nerf the Crown Tower damage one day to 20% if the Miner starts to rise again? Well, history has repeated itself many times for the Miner minor, so I wouldn't be surprised. One change I think would be cool was the idea some people mentioned back in 2020 of not allowing the minor to be played on your own side of the arena. It would make the card even more unique, yet weaken its versatility just a little bit, which could be cool. I myself was one of the five minor haters back in 2020 because it did feel like it did too much damage for 3 elixir, but I think it feels much more fair to go against nowadays with the 25% crown tower damage. It's inherently one of the least frustrating cards to go against, so it's probably better this card stays good. One thing that does sometimes annoy me though is the fact that you have to practically guess which side the miner is going to pop up on to defend it properly, which feels a bit too random to me. So if it was up to me, I would actually nerf his deploy time to 2 seconds but compensate it with an overall damage damage buff, just so it's easier to counter him more consistently. Let me know what you think about the miner in the comments below and what card you want me to cover next. Thank you all for watching, and have a good one.